Eyes tearing up. Good there. Wow, I can actually grab it and not burn my hand. That's cool. Ooh, she's cooking. She is cooking, baby. Yeah. Welcome back to the NFA Review Channel, everyone. Before we get started today, I just want to kind of give you guys an update on the channel. So, Patreon is doing good. We have almost all of the Mission Enhanced Little Birds from AB Suppressor, the last review I did. We have almost all of those group by barrels sold. I think there's like six left. So if you want to get in on it, you want to get in on that special price with the special package deal, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash NFA review and check it out. They're almost sold out. Uh, and other news as well, I just found out not too long ago that our, uh, our baby in the oven, my wife, she's carrying our daughter. So it's a girl, which is pretty cool, and she should be here on June 26th, which is pretty awesome. So life-changing event coming up soon. We cannot be more excited. I cannot wait. I'm definitely going to be a girl dad and get her involved in the industry. Uh, I want her to succeed in life and definitely want her to be pro-gun. So really, really, really looking forward to that. But today we're going to be taking a special look at a new product from Coltac. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, I'm friends with Dustin Coleman over at Coltac. Really great guy. He used to be an engineer for Ruger. Actually had a hand in their suppressors and the Ruger precision rifle. So that's kind of how we met. He then left and started his own company, Coltac, which is really, really cool. American dream, followed his dream. Now they have a huge warehouse, tons of employees, and they are putting out some really, really cool products. So if you wanna see the first review I did for them, I think it was like back in 2017, go check that out. I'll put it up here, you can click that link. And I go into great depth on the importance of shooting with a suppressor Mirage cover when shooting through a scoped platform. Now today's a little different because this product is more for keeping your legs from getting burned when you're doing transition drills and you have a very hot can that has just possibly been run full auto or had a lot of mags through it, something that's abnormal that the other suppressor covers are not designed for. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna cover this product in detail and then we're gonna hit that range and have a lot of fun today. Waste a lot of ammo and cost me a lot of money. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now your suppressor cover is going to ship in a little plastic package like this. So if you are a gun shop looking to actually stock these things, it's going to come ready to sell on a retail level. Now on the back, it's going to have exactly what it is. So they have the HTP, which is a different model. Their Python, again, we just discussed that. And then of course the core set. And then your lengths, if it's custom like I have, it shows six and a half inches by one and a half inches. So that's pretty cool on there. You get a little sticker and that is it for that. Now, as far as specifications, of course, you can build this to order. Now, sizing comes up a lot, so much so that Coltac has a sizing video on their website explaining how to size your cover properly. Now, of course, cliff notes there. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that your cover is not covering any locking mechanism on your suppressor that you're gonna need to get to if this is cinched down type. And of course, you don't want it too long, too flush, so that if this does slide forward a little bit under recoil, you do not want the edge of this cover to move past the muzzle and the suppressor. If you do that, you'll create a false crown and your shots can widen up and shift. So definitely don't want to do that. So as far as sizing, the shortest length that you can order it in is 2.5 inches. And the uh, smallest diameter that you can order it in is one inch. Now, as far as the weight, of course, it's going to go up depending on the size of the suppressor cover, and that formula is 0.25 ounces per inch. As far as the materials, it is pretty neat. Uh, Dustin told me they went through a ton of R&D and a ton of money to make sure that when they tell people that this is full auto rated, it can actually withstand it. So as far as the materials, the outer shell is constructed of Kevlar and Nomex. The inner liner is a proprietary blend of carbon fiber Nomex and the Coltac secret sauce. And the cord is Kevlar, which is pretty cool. So definitely some high-end materials at play here. And you're probably wondering what the temperature rating is. Well, the max temperature rating for the corset cover, okay, not the other ones, but this corset cover, the new one, 
comes in at 3,150 degrees Fahrenheit before failure. One more time. 3,100 degrees before failure. That is cooking. So basically, this thing would be melting. I mean, really. It would be red, orange, white in some areas. You'd probably damage the baffles. You definitely have baffle erosion. I don't care what suppressor you have. Uh, so this should have no problem on the end of any of our guns. Because if you're out there burning up cans and covers, then I guess money's no option to you and you don't really care what you destroy because it would take a ton of ammo to get you the end of your suppressor to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So anyway, as far as color goes, your colors are pretty much the same as the late Henry Ford's. You can have any color you want as long as it's black. So because of the the properties of this material, it can only be made in a black color, which is fine. Thank God the high temperature color wasn't uh, pink with purple polka dots, because that would be really weird. <laughs> so we can all pretty much make do with black covers. Now, as far as the warranty, it is a no BS lifetime warranty. Now I've known Dustin for a long time, and remember when the, the whole boom happened with these things? Everybody was making suppressed covers, they all had their own way, and people started to misuse them. They were using them, like today's video. They were using them for transition drills. They were burning them up on full auto guns. They were using them properly. The early suppressor covers were made for heat mirage mitigation only, like I said earlier. So regardless of how they misused it, Dustin still warranted it and sent them a brand new cover in the mail at no cost to them, which is really cool. So no BS warranty and a retail price of $125. Now, if you are a patron on Patreon today, is a really cool day because not only do you continue to get the Coltac suppressor covers at 50% off, but we now have a NFA review edition tab on there. So pretty cool. Like I said earlier, Dustin's grown and over the years he's been buying these really, really trick machines. He can pretty much customize anything now. So uh, he has the ability to make his own custom uh, tabs here. So if you look close, you can see my NFA review shield there and if you flip it up on the back it says uh, coltac.com made in the usa and then it has their logo so pretty cool same material that their other tags are made from so if you are a company out there and you need uh or you want these to sell on your website and you want your own logo on there i'm sure coltac can license these for you one particular company comes to mind and that is rugged suppressors since they tout belt federated suppressors belt federated cover that'd be pretty cool to see a rugged logo on there and to see these on their website one day so pretty pretty neat there i'm pretty proud of that one so uh, to get the the nfa review channel logo it's only available for gold members on patreon and you do get half off so you're paying half and you're getting a cool tag well cool in my mind anyway now moving on like i mentioned earlier this suppressed cover is to protect the user when they are doing transition drills laying the gun down on something they don't want to burn including a table or your leg or a gear bag Okay, so the last thing you want to do is be shooting drills. You have a suppressor on there. You go to transition your gun. You take your weak hand down. You pull your pistol up. And now you have a nice six and a half inch scar on your left leg with a nice little serial number and logo from Rugged Suppressors permanently installed on your thigh. So that's something we don't want to do. Uh, of course, that would be only if you're wearing shorts while you're doing drills. But if you're doing a shorts on Hawaiian day at the range, then that could probably happen. If not, you're definitely going to burn and melt stuff to your pants, especially if you're wearing nylon pants, that would definitely suck. So uh, this cover is going to be uh, king out there for that. Now, if you don't need this for that job, you need the Python series or the HTP series. So the Python is going to be more geared towards your magnified optic heat mirage mitigation I mentioned earlier. Remember, I'll throw that link up for you guys to go check out that older review. Now, I want to go ahead and get shooting soon. But before we do, I want to show you some other stuff that they have working out. So he sent me a little fun bag here. So this is their new grocery getter bag. So you've seen, I'm sure, in your wife's car, my wife has a milk crate full of these things, this, these bags that you can reuse for getting groceries. So that's where it got its name. Of course, you can use it for whatever you want. You got some molly webbing here to attach more pouches, a little clip here for your keys, a patch uh, Velcro and it has a, a high visibility orange liner, which is pretty trick. We also sent the new suppressor bag. Holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
suppressors. So those of you that have a nice little collection going, if you want to organize all your suppressors to and from the range without having them roll around in bags or have to cut foam out for Pelican cases and stuff, you can just throw up to eight suppressors in this bag, which comes in, of course, all your usual colors, multicam, black, black multicam, all that stuff. So that was pretty cool. I'm actually, I need that. I need like 10 of those. Um, another rear bag, of course, in black multicam. Not done yet. He sent a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm really digging that black multicam. This could be my uh, girl dad, uh, what do you think? Diaper bag, huh? Tactical diaper bag. I told him, I said, you guys need to get on the whole tactical diaper bag thing. It's a thing now. So this is cool. Now let me just, there we go. Look at all this stuff we got here. All right, so we have the other suppressor covers. I'll probably be giving some of these away on Patreon because I have a ton of them. And this is a really cool product I kind of want to touch base on before we hit the range. So this is their tricorn bag. So this is pretty neat. I'm gonna throw up some pictures from their website, but in essence, it's a bag you can use for different platforms. So you can pretty much use this on a stage for a shooting competition, or if you're a sniper on a SWAT team or a recreational shooter, this gives you the ability to shoot stable from many different surfaces, which is really cool. So instead of having those straps that go over your uh, handguard on a rifle, this attaches with their backbone frame that he sent with it. And this, this has the Picatinny rail adapter on it, the ADM quick throw mount. So you basically, this attaches to here. And then um, once it's on there, you can basically quick detach this from the base of your rifle and use it as a platform, which is really, really trick. So the precision shooting world, if you don't know about Coltac already, you've pretty much messed up. But uh, now hopefully you guys can kind of see exactly what they have going on. I mean, they don't just make suppressor covers. Actually, if you go to their website, coltac.com, you'll see they have a plethora of high-end shooting gear now, and they have a lot more coming, some really cool stuff I'm not allowed to tell you about yet. I wish I could, but you're gonna wanna stay tuned on the Coltac website. So uh, let's go ahead and pack up some covers, pack up a metric crap ton of ammo, some host, and let's go put this suppressor cover to the test. All right, guys, we made it out to the new range. That's right, uh, Tony, uh, my friend going back to third grade, he owned the property that we used to film on. Uh, it was 60 acres. He's recently decided to retire, so congratulations for him. He's selling all of his equipment, his land, and the berm is no more. So we are out here at a new location thanks to Little Miss Cricket. She opened up her range to us here so we can now film here whenever we need to. Uh, it's definitely much more intimate, and I love that about it. We have shade over here, have a little table. I could take a little uh, quick break in between uh, filming. So definitely going to be able to do a lot of fun content out here for you guys. So today, of course, we are going to torture test the Coltac cover. Okay, let's go ahead and take some baseline measurements here. So I read the manual for this correctly. The top number is our ambient air temp. And then this number here is going to be the actual temperature when we when we laze it. And then there's your humidity. Uh, so lasers on the can, as you can see. And we are at 85, 84. Let's do the cover. So the cover is 86.2 degrees. And the can is a couple degrees cooler. Okay, the sun just uh, peeked out through those clouds there. So... Again, you know, we are in Florida, so we're not covered in snow like the rest of the country. So uh, we're going to be dealing with, you know, 86 to 90 degrees here, baseline temps. Let's get on the front muzzle area. Yeah, so 85 to 90. So we'll do a standard deviation of about 5 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for this baseline. So 85 to 90 is going to be our base. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing cooking. Now, as far as the clouds going in and out of those trees, uh, we are going to have some exposure issues here with the camera. So just uh, bear with me there. There's no way I can uh, solve that. I don't have anybody here to help. So the, uh, the picture here might go uh, bright and dark every now and then when a cloud passes. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and get to it. Oh, come on. All right, we are live and ready to rock. Here goes nothing. Fire in the hole. Okay. 
We want to do uh, full auto here, gun. That'd be great. Maybe not enough gas. What are you doing? All right, I had to actually uh, reset here due to technical difficulties. Uh, I am using a brand new box of M27 links. And as you can see here, they're so new, it's not stripping that round through the link fast enough and the gun's not, re it's not working, it's jamming. So these are two new links. So we're gonna set these aside, this 100 rounds for now. And I'm gonna run it with this drum mag and see what we can get going. Fire in the hole, take two. Jammed. Double feed. Come on, dude. All right, screw you. Let's go to the D mag here. Okay, that worked. We're cooking now, 60 rounds, smoking. Hell yeah. Mag's caught in there for some reason. It's like really caught. What? Hello? Hello, Mag. What are you caught on? What in the devil? Well, that's a first for me. This thing is cooking though. Let's take a temp real quick. Screw it. Holy crap. We're at 467 degree, oh, 503. I got a 503 degree rating. Can is, or the cover's smoking here. Probably normal. The outside of the can is, let me let it settle here, 267 degrees. So outside is 503 and then 267 for the actual cover on the outer sheath. Now I don't know why I can't get this freaking mag out. It's literally stuck in the gun. There should be nothing holding it. I mean, this is ridiculous. One eternity later. There's literally nothing that should lock this in here. How about that, you little b-hole? <laughs> so I got it off, and yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video to find out just how I got it out. Hey, adapt and overcome, baby. Okay, so now that we've had some brutal technical difficulties this morning with all this and the D60 mag, I have gone to the old school mags, okay? So I have seven mags here, grabbed it from my truck kit. So 210 rounds, I'm gonna shoot full auto. So I have a dual right here and then these mags here. So hopefully everything runs. Okay, let's go ahead and take a reading real quick. See what we got, let me get my other camera here going. All right, end of the suppressor is 292 degrees and the cover is 188. So about a hundred degree difference right now. So it's had time to cool off. We are seeing some color changing underneath. This is normal. Um, I'm very familiar with this, with the fire department, with the fire service, since this is made from the same external materials as our turnout coat that we use for interior structural firefighting. Uh, we will see color change like this when it gets when our gear gets exposed to a high temperature environment. It's completely normal. Uh, it's basically just the ink losing its uh, hold on whatever it's on. So again, the outer surface is one, 190 to 200 kind of area on the outside. All right, fire in the hole. Wow, we made a whole mag. Holy crap. It's amazing. Yeah, I need to tighten that more, but oh well. Wow, first uh, full functioning mag. Let's try that again. <laughs> you son of a gun. You bastard. Oh. Let's 
Turn the gas setting up then, huh? You wanna play games? We'll play games. All right. Yeah, that ran about as smooth as freaking. What the hell? I'm beginning to think we should have used this lower on a different upper. Okay, so we have reset. I have seven mags fully loaded. So we have 210 rounds plus whatever we have left from the beta mag. We're gonna try that at the end. I switched the uppers. This is a um, Palmetto State Defense 10 and a half inch upper with their monolith suppressor pinned to it. So it's a fixed setup. So no way the suppressor can come loose. That's how I got around the SBR laws on that one. This is my truck gun. So I just stole the upper from it. And uh, let's give this a go. All right, fire in the hole. Oh my God, I can't see anything. Woohoo, it worked. Eyes tearing up. Good there. Oh, I can actually grab it and not burn my hand. That's cool. Ooh, she's cooking. She is cooking, baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. She is cooking. Let's get you back on there. Let's get you back on there. There you are. Oh, the outer, outer edge of the sheet's still good. Let's see what we got. Another mag going. That's just the chemicals cooking off on the cover. As if we're in a burning building. Holy shit. Oh, I'm gonna melt this bag. Look at that suppressor. It is cool. I don't know if you can see it. Let me grab my other phone or my other camera here. Oh. Look at the freaking suppressor, dude. Glowing red. Let's get a reading. Let's get a reading. This is fucking crazy. Oh my God. We are at 925 degrees on that side. Is this weapon clear? Yeah, we're empty. We're empty. Uh, let me get, I want to see the inside of that. So, I want to get the laser on the inside. I can't see it. Let me see here. One thousand and change. Holy crap. I saw it go to a thousand. Let's get the end of this baby. Holy crap, I got some baffle strikes on the end cap. Some end cap strikes, I mean. Oh no. Yeah, it's it's cooking. All right, the outside of the cover is Five hundreds, and then the can is. I saw one one thousand twenty-five pop up. So five hundred degree difference. That's uh, pretty incredible. Let's go ahead and keep running. I still have two more mags. I just don't want to totally kill the suppressor because it is pinned to my barrel, as you can see. So let's. Uh, how many rounds was that? We did four. One, two, three, four mags. All right, four mags full. Oh God, the, can't even touch the gun and just burn my arm. I'm gonna have Serbu Firearms logo on my forearm for the rest of my life. Thanks, Mark. So we're at a five minute burn time at a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, which is ridiculous. So if you guys were running and gunning this thing in like a class, you're not gonna be dumping four mags in full auto succession. You'll be doing semi-auto fire, shooting, you know, three to 10 rounds or whatever, transitioning uh, to your pistol. So this, it'll have plenty of time to cool. You won't even get through a whole mag most likely. So the fact that the outer layer of this has not just completely 
fell off is amazing. And there's no bulk on this. If you remember the HTP that had that sleeve, fuck. Jesus. The bolt release, that's, uh, ow. Um, if you remember the HTP, it had a lot of girth to it because it had that inner sock. Hopefully I'm not yelling at you guys. Um, you don't have that anymore here. Uh, this is the same thickness as their normal old school Python covers for heat mirage mitigation. So he definitely did his R&D here because this thing is, I mean, cooking in here. I mean, by all accounts, over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit at over five minute mark, this thing should have burned off. Oh shit. Look at all these problems I'm having today. Check this out. I think the receiver melted my grip. Look at my Magpul grip. I mean, there's nothing going right today. Fire in the hole. Wow, that's loud. This can is shot out. Something happened. Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's glowing red. It got white at one point. Hopefully that camera angle there got it. All right, well, you know what? Fuck it. Let's kill this thing. Let's kill this can, baby. I'm gonna shoot, I'm just gonna let it ride. My grip's probably gonna fall off and the can's probably gonna blow up. So, uh, this should be interesting. Holy moly, we are clear. That was 210 rounds with five minute chill time. Shake and bake, what do we got, what do we got? My barrel itself is red, it's at 400 degrees. The outer surface of the cover is 609 degrees. The inside is glowing red. Let me get this other camera here. You guys gotta see this. I gotta be careful not to touch it. Can you see that? Does it show up? Hopefully it shows up, but it is, uh, it is glowing red. I'm gonna try to remove this thing. Jesus, it's fucking burning. It's burning the table. The weapon is clear. My grip's about to fall off. My can's toast. The outer surface of the cover is now 504. I really want to get this thing off so I can uh, look at this can. Oh my God, I'm glad it didn't blow up in my face. What just fell? Part of my gun, I'm sure. Look at this turd. What a bad day filming. Where is it? Right there. 1400 degrees Fahrenheit after all this time. All right, ending thoughts. <laughs> Today was probably the most challenging video I have filmed in the past two to three years. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna edit it just now, but we did have a lot of issues with the weapon platforms uh, from the get-go. Uh, from the top, we had failure to feed with the M27 links. These are brand new, so it was not stripping them off. Uh, typically, you wanna use uh, secondary used M27 links because they're a little looser and the uh, bolt carrier can slam them home a lot easier. We had that problem. We had the Magpul, the Magpul D60 uh, get locked in the gun, which I found a creative way to remove it after 15 minutes. Um, and then we had, uh, what else do we have? Uh, then this gun would not run any mag. I don't know why it's having some problems today. I'm gonna have to go through it. It might be the XM193 ammo since it likes to use M855 ball. If you guys remember the review from this, this gun was designed on M855 uh, ball. So could have been an ammunition issue. So since I didn't have any 855 with me, we had to switch gears and grab my other upper, which is my truck gun. This is a, it had a Palmetto State Defense um, semi-automatic lower on it. I put the Serbu post sample M16 lower on it in its place. And then it has a 10 and a half inch Mark 18 Mod 1 build with a pinned uh, suppressor on there. So then we went to go shoot uh, 210 rounds of nonstop full auto XM193 ammo, very hot stuff. Um, 
to the point to where the can was glowing white and red and it bulged out a little bit. There's one, two bulges here and the end cap is shot to absolute hell. So I destroyed that suppressor. So uh, hopefully uh, I can send it into Palmetto State Defense and they can uh, fix me up there. As far as the cover, I uh, off camera, I called Dustin with Coltac and explained to him our findings with the test and evaluation today. And I explained to him all the, all the issues, of course, and then uh, the, the uh, string of full auto we did with no brakes, and then the fact that we left the cover on a suppressor that was reading from 1200 degrees to 1500 degrees via laser from where I could read it in between the laces. It was definitely hotter if it's glowing white and red, but I, I couldn't get the laser to fit in between the laces. Uh, it was just too tight, or the uh, crease here. So uh, this cover sat on a 1200 degree to 2000 degree, let's just say, suppressor for 11 minutes, 20 seconds, somewhere around there. So uh, definitely way outside the scope of what it was designed for. Now, of course, if you guys are looking at this product, you're not gonna take this product and and come out here and do a bench test like I did here. This is a torture test. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw this on your suppressor and use it in a class for transition drills like I've been saying the entire video. So in those classes, you'll shoot a string of fire, put your weapon on safe, transition to your pistol, go from there. So any type of class you're gonna run with a slung rifle, this is something you're gonna want. You're certainly not gonna run seven mags of full auto uh, with no brakes and then just lay it on your leg. Uh, so this was a great test of the threshold of what it can endure. Um, we did have failure of the laces when I went to go yank it off the front of the gun and it looks like a little bit of the front band here. But for this thing to sit on the suppressor for 11 minutes at those temperatures is pretty incredible and it's still normal. See, it's not crunchy. Um, I'm actually quite shocked. Uh, of course, this I would replace uh, just because of damage to the cords. And of course, Dustin said on the phone, no problem. I have no problem uh, with my no BS warranty to replace suppressors, even if they are misused by the end user, AKA me. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was entertaining. It sure as hell was uh, entertaining out here today by myself on the range. Definitely got some good laughs in on and off camera with all the problems we had. but. Uh, the fact that we destroyed the suppressor before the cover, that says something about how strong his new materials are on the inside. So pretty, pretty proud of Dustin and where they've come just in the past three years. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. My Patreon members, swear to God, if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be able to do this. I destroyed the Magpul D60 mag. I destroyed a suppressor. And we shot probably 600 rounds of ammo at a dollar a piece. So my current cost for today's video, not including travel time and editing time, uh, we're looking at over $1,000 just to, just to film today's video. So if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be able to keep doing this. Um, just so you guys know, my, for all of my videos on YouTube, all of them, hundreds of videos, I make 300 and something dollars a month for the whole month. For all those videos combined, that's how much YouTube hates gun tubers. So if it wasn't for my patrons, there's no way in hell I could just go out here and willy-nilly waste ammo to uh, show you guys a torture test on this product. So uh, for my patrons on Patreon, thank you guys. We want to continue to educate the masses out there on NFA shooting sports, and we can only do that with your help. So again, if you guys like the video, please click that like button. It certainly helps us be suggested video to watch on YouTube. And if you like what you saw, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you next video. Uh, might as well break this new gun and never been fired. HK9 Expert. I am going to shoot this thing off. Can't believe I'm doing this, but there's, I have tried everything in the last 15 to 20 minutes to get this thing off, everything. And I'm gonna try to fracture it here and then I could just pull these broken pieces out. So thank God this is a uh, post sample M16 and not a transferable. This would be good bonus footage. I gotta get point blank on this, otherwise I'll hit the gun, so. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. F you.